Now imagine a world where treating tuberculosis doesn't mean months of swallowing multiple bitter pills. Well, the VITS advanced drug delivery platform is working to make simpler, faster and more patient-friendly TB treatments. The drug delivery program is developing innovative nanomedicine-based drug delivery systems that work better and fit into people's lives more easily. For more on these developments, let's bring in the university's nanomedicine and drug delivery researcher, Leon Koza. Good evening, Mr. Koza. Thank you very much for joining us on the program. Good evening, Nofunda. Thank you for having me today. Uh, no, it's a pleasure to have you with us as we mark World TB Day. I know a lot of people are keen to, keen to hear on the innovative ways that you look to make it easier for TB, t TB patients. Pardon me. But before we get to that, I want you to give us context on just how big a threat TB is in the country currently. Thank you so much for having me today. I really appreciate it. Uh, TB is a major concern for in the world, just globally. Not only in South Africa, it causes a lot of uh, fatalities. I mean, it causes about uh, 1.7 million deaths yearly that can occur due to MTB, and about 10.5 million people get infected with TB yearly. And it continues to pose that threat because it's one of the major uh, smart diseases that can replicate, that can evolve, and and evade all the treatment and the innovations that we currently have. Just to bring into context, in South Africa alone, the latest that says that uh, about 56,000 people died because of TB. Mm. And the minister was just speaking right now that in every hour about 10 people die because of TB. So it's really a threat that is, that is, that, that is out there and it's real something. And the World TB Day is not just out there to say we commemorate TB, it's just to raise awareness on how serious TB it is and how and how fatal it can be to mm. everyone. So. And it's quite unfortunate because we constantly hear how treatable it is and preventable it is, but yes. we still see a lot of people succumbing to this deadly disease. But if we had to look at your innovation now, you've got treatment that could possibly reduce the number of pills that people take. Currently, we know that some take up to six pills for six months or nine months. For those that have extra pulmonary tuberculosis, they would take for up to nine months. Talk yes, to us about yes. this innovation. So the innovation is being done at Vitz Advance, a drug delivery platform, as you have introduced, where we deal with mostly with uh, pharmaceutics, uh, the drug delivery, the nanomedicine, medicine under the leadership of Professor Yaya, one of the world-renowned uh, pharmaceutical scientists. So what we mainly specialize there, we know that TB takes a long time to treat, uh, as you have mentioned, six to eight months, and it's a lot of drugs that are involved, so it ends up uh, causing severe side effects, so that's yeah. why we end up having many individuals who do not stay the course, who do not finish the, the treatment, because it's a lot, it takes a lot, and if you come into South Africa, mostly TB is associated with HIV. So you have people who have HIV, and then when they have HIV, they're susceptible to TB. So combine that, you're taking uh, antiretroviral drugs, and now you have to take the TB drug. So it becomes a huge pill burden to mm -hmm. patient. So that's why it leads to them to not finishing the cause of treatment. Uh, they leave the cause of treatment. And, and what are the consequences that, of that? Because one assumes it would become more resistant, the kind of TB that they now have. Exactly. When you leave, uh, when you do not finish your treatment, now it becomes resistant, which now is one of the major concerns that we currently have, the drug-resistant uh, MTB, which is even costly to economic when you have to treat it because it's so expensive and it has even severe side effect compared to the first line, the one that we use initially. So these ones are more severe, which can cause uh, liver damage, it can cause kidney damage, so it's a, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. So now this is where we come in at uh, VITS Advanced Drug Delivery Platform, mm -hmm. so when we try to innovate try to push the boundaries saying, okay, now we're coming with the nanotechnology, nanomedicine, where, <coughs> where we focus on host-directed therapy and the smart drug delivery system. So in that case, we are now not targeting the bacteria itself because all the treatments that we have, they are targeting the bacteria. But now we say, let's target the immune system because we know that an individual has an immune system, an immune system that is capable of fighting all off disease. all diseases, mm. but now because MTB is smart, it, it's evolving, it, it, it is able to block all those mechanisms. So we come in and try and say, now we're fighting, we are encouraging the immune system to be able to fight off the TB. Mm. So through that, we, that's when now we are able to 
to decrease the dosing because now we use a drug delivery system which increase the drug efficacy even in small dosages now you don't have to take the higher dosage that you take only when you're just taking the medicine on its own but now combined with nanoparticles now we're increasing the efficacy of the drug we're increasing targeting because mm. now we're not just saying we're sending the drug to the body. We're now saying we are targeting. Where is the drug? The drug okay. is in the Mr. Arms. Kosa, pardon me for this. Uh, yes. I've just been told by my producers that we have to cross to the United Nations, to the G20 uh, in New York, currently underway. The UN Secretary Council is holding an open debate titled Advancing Adaptability in UN Peace Operations, Responding to New Realities under the Agenda Item. Let's just listen in. The review of the Secretary General of all UN peace operations requested in the Pact for the Future is pivotal in providing additional guidance to member states and other relevant stakeholders on the future of all UN peace operations, both special political missions and peacekeeping operations. Recent drawdown and withdrawal of some peace op operations have highlighted the need for early contingency planning and integrated approaches to transitions. There is a strong desire for the mainstreaming of tailored peace-building activities throughout the continuum of peace operations. This approach will assist the host states to sustain peace after the withdrawal of peace operations. In the advent of rapid technological developments, it is inevitable that peace operations would need to leverage on relevant technologies to enhance their operations. This cutting-edge approach would require not only relevant technologies, but requisite skilled personnel across the geographic spectrum where the UN has a peace operations footprint. Fundamentally, adequate and sustainable resources must be availed for peace operations to continually adapt and be effective. The recently launched UN AT initiative, which advocates for a culture of efficiency across the UN, including cost containment, should take into account the demands from host states and the ever-expanding functions of the UN peace operations. To conclude, Madam President, we maintain that the prevention of conflict remains the most, the most cost-effective way of maintaining and sustaining global peace and security. Ultimately, the adaptability of peace operations will depend on the unity of the Security Council. For our part, South Africa will continue to actively participate in relevant fora to strengthen UN peace operations. I thank you. I thank His Excellency Mr. Dango for his statement. I wish to remind all speakers to limit their statement to no more than three minutes in order to enable the Council to carry out its work especially expeditiously. All right, live visuals there from New York at the G20 Open Debate. South Africa's Director General there of International Relations, Zane Dango. Many would also know that he is the G20 Sherpa. But we'll continue to bring you that just after this. But we continue with our conversation now in studio with you, Leon. Thank you very much for your indulgence. You were still talking to us about this nanomedicine. Yes. For me, the biggest issue has been adherence. Yes. So when you talk about targeting the immune system now and no longer the TB itself, how will this work? Because when looking at your research, it seems there are some uh, elements or treatment called inhalable medicine. So mm -hmm. what would happen there is that once a day, one would have to inhale this kind of medication or it's once a week where it's long lasting because people sometimes also have a problem with taking medicine on a day to day basis. That's when you have the adherence issue. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you. I feel like you know more about this than I do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to adherence and what we're doing, it's because now, as you were saying, it, uh, it's a daily administration and it's, uh, it's not targeted. So that means individual just take it, it goes all over the body. So now when we say it's targeted, that means now we are specific that when you take it, it's going to go to the, to the lungs, it's going to go to the disease itself. When you do that, you are able to use the small dosage of the drug. So now you, you do not require to use the high dosages you are required when you're just treating with you using your standard uh, treatment which now uh, lead to drug resistant so when you're using this you are allevi alleviating those side effects because mostly they they they, they 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 do not finish the treatment because of the severe side effects so now when we're using the small drug but with a higher payload a small concentration but it can still deliver uh, the efficacious uh, the efficacy that we require so now patients are able to stay as you are saying which now it can be uh, released for such a long time so those are the one uh, some of the advantages of nanoparticles that you don't have to do daily administration it's something that you can administer today because they provide sustained releases a release that can take up to a week a release that can take up to a month so it's up to you how you optimize your system and how you want it to be so by that it reduces all those um, 
burden of daily administration it reduces the burden of uh, the cytotoxicity that comes with daily administration and the cytotoxicity that comes with taking a higher concentration of drug in order to get the maximum effect because a drug when you take it uh, it goes through a lot of barriers in your body so when it reaches uh, its site where it's intended mm. it's no longer efficacious because it has it's to, broken down, it's broken over the, down. Yeah. Mm. so now when we use nanoparticles or nanomedicine it goes straight to the target to where it's supposed to go and then it delivers that high impact mm -hmm. drug so how far are you with this research because i'm sure there are those listening today who would think that they r want to get maybe themselves on this medication or their loved ones so how far the research is an ongoing research, but uh, we've had some breakthrough. Uh, it, uh, it, uh, we showed that uh, our nanosystem was able to deliver high impact while using the smallest concentration of rifampicin compared to a standard uh, rifampicin. So the research is under patent uh, application at the moment to try and, uh, and protect it. You know, when it comes to drug development, it's a, a lot that goes in. Yeah. It's not something that you just wake up and say, okay, we have it. So it takes a lot of, lot of process, a lot of clinical trials that has to be done. So it's a lot of work uh, and uh, it's not only one project. It's, it's a lot of projects that are happening because we are not only focusing on pulmonary TB because we know that TB can spread into your bones. We also yeah. have skeletal TB where we're working with scaffold which can be used to regenerate the bones which are affected by TB so it's a, it's a lot of work a lot of work and a lot of projects mm -hmm. and groundbreaking projects well uh, certainly groundbreaking and quite impressive though I'm sure as we mark will TB day today it's honestly quite heartening for many to see that progress is being made in as much as you're still here researching but quite impressive thank you very much for joining us this evening that's leon cause a researcher at the nanomedicine and drug delivery systems at the wits university